What's up guys, this is Quante, and welcome back to more Let's Play Donkey Kong Country Returns. And in this episode, we will be fighting the terrible Tiki Tong himself. You remember that giant towering worm we seen in the first episode of the game that just bursted out of the volcano? Yeah, well he's still waiting there. We finally made it all the way to this point, but look at the things that we have to go through just to get to him. And, well, there's the big baddie himself. So unlike all the other, you know, boss levels in this game, they didn't really have anything as to where you had to, you know, get to the boss. You would just walk a few steps and then bada boom pow, you're at the boss. This level is completely different as to where, well, we are actually having to climb the volcano and get to the boss. So they were mindful of everything when they put th that life there and all these bananas because if you die, there's no checkpoint, so you're going to need all the lives you can get to try to go through this if you're really bad at these segments, because it does take a while to get used to, and you pretty much have to know what's coming, or else you're going to end up dying, because everything's a one-hit kill, of course, so at least they put this part in, and we're considerate of the people who really aren't that good at the game, but there's a lot that goes into this, like, if it was most controlled, it would suck. <laughs> Because I, I know how like a lot of games back when the Wii first came out had motion control. And just if that had motion control, if you had to tilt the remote around and stuff, that would really suck. But we're going inside of him. We're not fighting him. Why? I mean, that's kind of dumb, but okay. And oh god, we're, we're inside of him. Get in my belly. And oh, there's the banana horde. It's a lot smaller than I remember it, but okay, whatever. You know, we got it back. <laughs> so, oh, I can smell the bananas in the air, of course. And there's all the tikis we previously defeated. I guess they all just miraculously somehow landed here in this volcano. And look at this guy. That's Tiki Tongue. Doesn't really seem like much of a threat, does he? Well, no, because they actually stole the bananas for a reason, like I said for tiki production and well to make a slushy or something or smoothie because this guy is actually a giant wooden blender <laughs> just look at all of that luscious banana juice that's just gonna flow out of his mouth they're just like oh yeah I can feel it on my skin man <laughs> oh, so delicious but they somehow form well perfect balls of juice? I don't really know. <laughs> it just helped create hands, and this guy still doesn't really seem that threatening. Because, I mean, how many bosses in Nintendo games have we seen that are floating hands and heads? I mean, there's Bongo Bongo from Ocarina of Time, there's Andross, there's that one boss in Wind Waker, and there's just plenty of bosses that are like this. So why not make quick work of this guy like we did those bosses back in all the other Nintendo franchise games? So this guy can actually be quite the doozy if I say so myself because he's so fast and you gotta be ready for every attack that he does. And his weak points are obviously the red points on his hands that glow. And when they glow, that's obviously when he's gonna attack. So he does signify, you know, what's gonna happen and when it's gonna happen. And when he makes that heart appear on his hands, make sure not to try to get that, because that's actually a trap, and he'll like crush you inside of his hands. But each of his hands take two hits, and once it takes two hits, it explodes into a flare of bananas, and it's just simply glorious to look at. <laughs> but, I mean, Donkey Kong's losing his bananas, we don't want that. We want all of them in our possession, dang it. But why don't you actually flip that hand over and be a man, you know, attack us. And, oh, he's trying to trick us. What an idiot. Well, <laughs> for trying to trick us, that hand's gonna be gone. I really don't see how actual bananas were inside of that dough, because, I mean, like, that entire cutscene was completely devoted to banana juice, and real bananas were in there somehow. I really don't get the logic in it, but, I mean, like, Tiki's can do anything. You know, if they can go and hypnotize a bunch of animals into stealing our bananas, what makes us think that they can't, you know, use magic and voodoo to make the bananas whole again? I don't know. I mean, these things are a new thing in themselves. 
So, this this boss really isn't that bad, if I say so myself. I could have actually beaten him right there. I think he only takes one more hit. But we wouldn't have been able to see this attack, which is actually sort of challenging the dodge. But, I mean, it's not really too bad. This this guy is a joke, <laughs> just to be completely honest. I mean, he's no K rule, but he's gone. So, <laughs> he's going to explode into a flurry of bananas himself. I'm guessing that the Tiki's actually may have built him since he had bananas inside of him, but I really don't know. I mean, like, since the Tiki's are pretty much seemingly made of bananas and wood, it makes you wonder who actually built each and every one of these Tiki's themselves. Who really knows? Could the Krimleys have been behind this the entire time? Who knows? But Donkey Kong made the moon drop, <laughs> and that got rid of that guy. He got rid of him surprisingly easy. And well, more bananas are going <laughs> to erupt out of the volcano. So what that little stack of bananas actually turned into was actually just millions of bananas running from the sky, because that's completely logical. Ah, oh, Nintendo. Whatever. But this ending makes more sense if you have Diddy Kong, because, well, he saves Donkey Kong from actually falling. Well, I think he does either way if you don't have him or not, but I don't really know. <laughs> but... Yeah, the fat log got his bananas back, and we finished the game. <laughs> but it makes you wonder, how long are the bananas just going to end up, like, spewing out of the volcano? And is he going to go through all the trouble of actually going back through each of the worlds to actually get them again? I don't really know. But let's go through the staff credits and everything. Look at Donkey Kong play as DS. Because <laughs> technology is rampant where Donkey Kong lives, of course. But... My opinion on this game, well, you pretty much have already known my opinion on this game if you've watched the LP, because I've stated my opinion many times. This is a great game, and a great platformer, and I think Retro Studios did a terrific job with this game. I mean, it's just the best. <laughs> I mean, Donkey Kong Country has always been one of my favorite series, mainly because it's always had that difficulty and that charm, you know? Just like all the games aren't really that easy, but they're not really too hard, and I really like the balance. I mean, Donkey Kong Country 3, I really don't like that one, because I think they tried the... I think it has too many gimmicks. I mean, like, that's weird to say, because this game has plenty of them, of course, but they actually work with the gameplay, you know? It doesn't really slow you down any, and you can be just about as good at this game as I am if you actually know what you're doing. DKC 3 just sort of seems like the gimmicks sort of get in the way of your gameplay and it just doesn't really seem too fun to play, you know? Sort of like Donkey Kong Country 3 is sort of like Sonic Advance 3, you know? It just had too much going for it with the level design to where it wasn't fun. And this game, you know, it's sort of a callback to the first game, but, you know, there's a lot of new stuff that they added. And this was one of those games that did it right in the era of when they actually tried to you know, bring back all of these platformers, like, this is one of the mini games that actually ended up turning out good, like, this game, Kirby's Return to Dream Land, and, you know, many more came out, like Sonic 4 and New Super Mario Bros. Wii, and those were kind of lackluster compared to, you know, this one and Kirby, but still, you know, they were all good games, and, well, I'll go ahead and spoil the game that I'm doing next, and that's actually, you know, Sonic 4 Episode 1. And that's actually because I actually want to talk about that game because, well, that sort of came out in this era of, I guess, callbacks. And, well, while this game was one that did it right, that game, not saying that it was terrible, but I'll talk about it more when I actually do the LP. That's if I do the LP, because that was one of the choices that I was actually thinking about when, you know, doing a game next. Because I haven't really been thinking of what I'm going to do next, because this LP actually... It happened faster than I thought it would. It wasn't really fast at all, but it was sort of fast for me, because it just seemed like I got so much done in every part, I guess. But, whatever. <laughs> this game is absolutely terrific, and, well, if you haven't played this game, you really should go pick it up. Because, I mean, like, I know some people didn't pick it up because of the Kremlings and stuff like that, but, I mean, like, it's a good game in its entirety. I mean, it doesn't need Kremlings to be good, I mean... I love you guys, but you can't be doing that, come on. <laughs> you just gotta play the game and enjoy it for what it is, and it's a really, really great game. So, I think it deserves all the praise that it gets, and, you know, 
more games need to be like this if they're going to be platformers because, well, it's absolutely terrific. But I think these credits should be over by now, shouldn't they? I mean, come on now. And I am just getting incredibly stuffy right now. <laughs> oh, there we go. I can actually talk. <laughs> I bet I sounded stuffy all throughout the credits, but I actually feel like I can talk now. But, in a random place, where the bananas are still falling, these DK statues have activated somehow. So you don't get this cutscene if you haven't completed all the temples in the game and gotten all the pearls. Because, like I spoiled in the last episode, that Five Monkey Trials wasn't actually the last temple. It's actually this one that just randomly appears out of the blue. And so the Golden Temple has been revealed. And you only get that, like I said, if you get 100% of the game. So that means that you have to, you know, collect all of the Kong letters in the entire game if you actually want to get that. And it's a very special level in itself. Because it's actually just one level, you know. When I played it, I was hoping that it was an entire world, but it's not. So let's actually get into this, shall we? So I think it's at... No, you do get the cutscene, actually. Like, the Golden Temple still reveals itself if you beat the game. I think that's the reward that you get. But you have to actually complete, like, all of the temple levels and get all the pearls before you can actually have access to it. That's what I was thinking of. <laughs> but see? So... Basically, almost like having all the Chaos Emeralds, you just gotta have this for the completion of the game. So, with that, we've unlocked this temple stage, and we can go inside. So let's get our prize, whatever's inside. <laughs> and this cutscene is sort of weird, because it's almost like Donkey Kong does drugs. Because there's this giant golden banana here, and you know, they get all excited. You know, they pretty much earn this. How they didn't know it was there before, I don't know, but let's just let's just eat it. <laughs> of course, what else is he going to do with it? He's not going to put it in for cash or anything. He's going to eat it, because he's just that big of a fat log. So they eat it, and they get, well, transported to a different dimension or something. It's almost like they did drugs, and they're tripping out, and they're all of a sudden in this place full of fruit. Well, this is the Golden Temple, and... <laughs> Well, it's almost like Donkey Kong died and went to heaven. That's what it, I'm going to basically say this is. And, well, it's still, you know, plenty of things that we haven't seen yet, like enemies. These enemies that pop out of dimensional realms and shoot at us, and these koala bears on Koopa Clown cars and stuff like that. It's like Donkey Kong accidentally went into Australia, and, well, the koalas are really angry. But I don't think Donkey Kong can bear the fact that these koalas are attacking him. I mean, come on now. I mean, these koalas are just angry because they don't have the koalifications to be bears. They're more like kangaroos, but whatever. <laughs> so there are no Kong letters in these, um, in this Golden Temple, just like the rest of them. So, I mean, it's not really too difficult. It just has a couple of tricky platforming sections, but, you know, it's not anything too difficult in its entirety. You just gotta have Diddy Kong if you actually want to get through this without actually having risk of dying, because there are actually some sections that are just kind of bogus, if anything, so having Diddy Kong is really awesome. But, it's a fun level, you know? We have cherry bombs, I mean, they threw in every possible stereotype for fruit that there could possibly be. <laughs> Fruits having stereotypes. I really didn't know what else to say when I said that, actually, so that's, that's just sure what came out. And what are these koalas, get away, man. I forgot what these guys are actually called, but I think they have a pun on their name as well. It's like koala something, koala copters, I don't really know. And oh god, the oranges, not the oranges. Don't try to damage me, I'm not a chicken. And oh yeah, this doesn't have a checkpoint, so if you die, that's that's it for you. <laughs> and I don't want to die, I have one heart left. <laughs> that's not going to be good if I die, but I don't plan on it. Because I am Quante, and I am the best at this game. <laughs> no one's ever going to stop me, because I have completed the Golden Temple. And all I have to do is just rapidly press the 2 button, just so I can get another prize. Because this game isn't over just yet. There is the mirror so this mirror actually makes you unlock mirror mode 
which is basically like the hard mode in Donkey Kong Country Returns if you didn't think it was hard already. So, you can now play any level in mirror mode. In this mode, Donkey Kong does not receive any help from his pal Diddy Kong and cannot use inventory items. And to make it even more challenging, he only has one heart. So that's really cool, just in my opinion, because I actually completed mirror mode, and it's actually pretty difficult. So if you didn't think this game was challenging enough, well, they added that in. So that'll do it for this Let's Play of Donkey Kong Country Returns. And, well, I'll see you guys in Sonic 4 or pretty much whatever else I decide to do next, so see you guys.